Would you say there wasn't ever uh, there wasn't ever liberal hysteria, and they were one hundred percent right about Trump in every way? The problem is that the challenge when dealing with Trump, there's multiple challenges at play here. One is that conservatives have completely flown off from reality, so the conservatives are a huge part. The second problem are uninformed people in the middle that just don't know any better, and then they always accuse the left of overreacting. And the third part was legitimately Trump was way worse than anybody thought he any reasonable person thought he'd be maybe i consider myself a reasonable person i thought that trump getting elected would be pretty bad but then i also thought that like it's probably just gonna be business as usual like whatever it's bad, like it happens bad presidents come and go whatever the i don't think anybody i don't think any like intelligent person actually thought that he would be this unhinged but then a fourth issue is that donald trump does so many unhinged things that it's hard to make him account for those things because when you start to call out too many, all of the Trump fans just go, uh, Trump derangement syndrome, Trump, Trump derangement syndrome, Trump derangement syndrome. Um, uninformed people in the middle uh, will look at it and go, yeah, true, these guys are being deranged. Like, you guys are being way too harsh on, on, on Trump. You guys are being not fair. And so when you're on the sidelines, you're kind of stuck in this weird world. It's like, okay, well, I can't criticize Donald Trump for everything he does because that makes me seem unhinged. Meanwhile, conservatives run pieces about Obama preferring Dijon mustard to ordinary mustard or wearing tan suits. Um, okay, well, we have to be careful about criminal investigations into Donald Trump stuff, even though the Republicans have been obsessing about Hillary's emails for years. Okay. Um, we can't focus. We just have to, I guess, completely drop the idea that Donald Trump won't publish his taxes, won't divest from his businesses, is a billionaire with assets all over the world, and is also president of the United States making decisions. But we have to talk about Hunter Biden being on the um, on the on the board of Burisma, I guess. Like the problem is that like if you're in a Democrat world, the Republicans have such an unbelievably low standard of what they tolerate that and as soon as you try to hold them to account for anything they try to play by your rules they try to play with the democratic rules They're like well hold on i thought that we weren't supposed to criticize for that by that so, yeah so there, there's there's two huge sets of rules and ben shapiro admitted it when he debated me there's two different sets of rules when the democrats are defending their people and when they are attacking the republicans they have to play by the democrat rules when the republicans are defending their guy or attacking democrats they get to play by the Republican rules. So you, you end up, it's just, it's, a, it's an unwinnable world. You can't, you can't win in that world um, because the, what's greenlit for Republican conduct is so unbelievably wide and what's available for criticism is so narrow that it just, it's, yeah, it's an unwinnable, yeah. But what are you gonna do? What's the solution then? Uh, I don't know. We're, <laughs> get rid of the internet. I think the internet is gonna f a lot of us, but I guess you just keep making, I mean, like technically Democrats are doing better and better. We just don't see it as much because the institutional power, or I shouldn't say the institute, the structural power, for as much as conservatives hate institutions, the structural power of the government broadly supports Republican uh, legislative and presidential power because the Senate gives undue weight to red voters. The House gives undue weight to red voters. And the Electoral College gives undue weight to red voters. Um, and now the Supreme Court favors red voters. So technically, the, the, because the Republicans benefit so much from their structural power, um, it's hard to see when Democrats are making gains. But I mean, like, even if you consider, like, people, you know, screech and moan about, like, oh, Hillary Clinton got destroyed by Donald Trump. Well, no, she didn't. Hillary Clinton annihilated Donald Trump. In fact, um, I, don't, I don't think I've heard a sound of this, but it wouldn't surprise me if Hillary had... No, no, that can't be true. Never mind. No, that that wouldn't be true. Besides Barack Obama, I bet Hillary Clinton probably had some of the most votes. Like the popular vote between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump was there's a huge gulf between this. Um, three million votes. Uh, it's a, over a two point difference in votes for Hillary versus Trump. But again, because of the structure of how the United States government works, um, Donald Trump won by you know almost eighty electoral votes. So it's it's hard to see if Democrats are gaining. Um, because of the, the, yeah, the, the structural power that Republicans have. Wait, why the House isn't it proportional? Um, the, the, house is, the House tries to be proportional, but it still favors small states pretty significantly. Even the House is. One thing that I would support um, immediately is I think the House of Representatives should be uh, expanded. Absolutely. The House of Representatives should be way more representative of people rather than land because that's what the Senate is for. There's no excuse for the House to not accurately resemble um, the constituents of the United States. 
Hillary was so unlikable, though, no one trusted her. Uh, apparently, three million more Americans trusted Hillary than Donald Trump. But how does the House favor small states? Um, because it's not it's not directly a, a proportional. Like, <clears throat> I don't know what the exact numbers are. I'm sure you're looking up, but it would be like this. Let's say that you have a state with one million voters, and let's say that you have a state with 10 million voters. The way that it works right now in the House of Representatives is it would be like, oh, the 10 million voter state, that state has 10 representatives. The 1 million voter state, they only have three representatives, right? So conservatives in um, chat, I'm sure they've been saying this, I'm not even reading these two. Um, conservatives might say some shit like, oh, no, actually, larger states have more representation in the House. Uh, no, not really. Like, the state kind of does a little bit, but, like, per voter, you, have, you still have less representation even in the House of Representatives. Um, and I don't think it should be that way. The Senate already has two votes per state. There's no reason to favor land in the, in the House as well. This should be rebalanced. Even in the House of Representatives, um, the uh, smaller states are, are disproportionately uh, represented. You're thinking of Electoral College. Wyoming only gets one House vote. The, um, I, I don't, why are you arguing with me on this? Um, uh, Creston Shinbull, come, come please, come. Uh, Creston Shinbull, as an attorney, watching Destiny go through these Supreme Court cases and legal issues makes me doubt his research in other areas. Please come to the disagreement room. Nothing makes me happier. Attorneys are the highest level of hubris to level of education. Okay, you have one of the most dipshittably attainable master's degrees. All you have to do is read and pass a test. Okay, like 80% of people can pass anyways. All right, nobody gives a f and then you go and you practice and then you forget literally every f thing you've learned in school anyways. And most of you suck shit your jobs regardless. Okay, come in and chat, come in and argue if you want. If you think that any of my analysis has been incorrect, feel free to, to jump into the stream disagreements channel on Discord. Go for it, please. Yes, nothing makes me feel smarter than chewing up. Okay, the worst type of grad student. Please come in, come in and chat. How do we know that Republicans are the crazy ones and not us? They seem to have the exact same condition. We just look at the facts. I don't know. <laughs> Give me one to argue with and I'll show you. The US population keeps growing, but the House of Representatives is the same size as in the Taft era. Wide range of representation ratios across the state. So these are the number of people represented by one lawmaker. So if you go to smaller states here, You'll see the number of people represented by one lawmaker is 600 to 700,000. Um, if you go to an ordinary state, it's 700 to 800,000. And then for some states, I guess you get super fucked and you've got like 800 to 900,000 people represented by one lawmaker. Wait, so you brought up Wyoming was your example. How many representatives does Wyoming have? Four, seven states have one representative, Alaska, Wyoming, Montana. Oh, so you said one. So Wyoming population is 581,000. So 300 or 39, one, two, three, one, two, three, divided by 52. So if you're in California, you get 750,000 people get one representative. In Wyoming, it only takes 580,000 people to get one representative. This is what I mean when I say the House isn't balanced either. In a perfectly balanced House, California would have more representatives, right? Is it true that undocumenteds are considered part of the population for House rep calculations? Um, I believe that is true, but because of the way the House is balanced right now, the last poll that I, or the last, I think it was a Gallup or Pew, I think that conservatives are the ones that benefit from that undocumented population by one vote right now, I think. Um, Pew, let me check on that. Pew Research um, Census uh, Illegal Immigrant House Seats. Was it just for electoral college seats or was it House of Representative seats? I don't remember. How uh, removing unauthorized immigrants from the census statistics could affect the House reapportionment. If you were to reapportion the House and you were to get rid of illegal immigrants, Texas and Florida would both lose one seat. Alabama, Minnesota, and Ohio would gain one seat, and California would lose one seat. Um, conservatives will screech about how illegal immigrants um, are helping like shape, like give Democrats, but it's not true. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> 